In this section, we'll draw from the last five tutorials and finally get our mix ready with proper levels. Automation will be added and then we'll export the audio. The first thing we want to do is set the levels for our project. This helps us get a preliminary balance of the mix so we can add EQ and effects later. Select the mixer from the devices menu. The key command for this is F3. Turn off the input channels since we won't be using them anymore. Do this by clicking the Hide Input Channels button on the left-hand side of the mixer. Press Start on the transport panel and listen to your mix. Move the faders for each track so you can hear all of the mix the way you like it. If for any reason you need to get the fader back to 0 dB, the default, you can Alt and click for the PC or Option and click for the Mac directly in the fader area. You can also change the fader by double clicking in the channel level area and setting the level manually. Be careful when it comes to how loud you raise the faders. Make sure you keep levels at a good volume so that they are as loud as possible without clipping. You will always know when you are clipping when the clip indicator lights up on the output channel. If it does, lower your levels and click on the clip. This will reset the warning light. That's it for setting the levels. Let's look at pan next. Setting the pan for each track moves its position in the stereo mix. It will either keep the signal balanced in the middle of the left and right speaker, lean to the left or lean to the right, or be completely in the left or right speaker. Right clicking in the panner on certain tracks presents you with three different types of pan options. Read up on the mixer in the operation manual for more information concerning different pan options. If you need to get the panner back to the middle, you can Alt and click on the PC or Option and click on the Mac anywhere in the panner area. Let's pan our two guitars slightly left and slightly right. This will spread them out a bit. Keep the drums track in the middle but let's move loop 1 a bit to the left and loop 2 a bit to the right. This will give our rhythm section a larger, more spacious sound. That's it for Pan. Let's move on to Mute and Solo. For each track, there is an M for Mute and an S for the Solo button. Mute will prevent you from hearing the track, and Solo will only pay the track or tracks that have S highlighted. You can have many tracks muted or soloed at a time. When you solo a track, the other tracks become muted. If you want to clear or deactivate all the mutes or solos, you can click on the Deactivate All Mute or Deactivate All Solo buttons on the left hand side of the mixer. There may be times when you want certain tracks to always play even if another track has solo active. If you Alt and click for the PC, or Option and click for the Mac on the S button, this will place the track in solo defeat mode. This allows the track to always play, even if you solo another track. To take a track out of solo defeat mode, simply Alt and click it again on the PC or option and click on the Mac. That's it for Mutant Solo. Let's move on to adding EQ. EQ or equalization add or subtracts frequencies so that we can place each instrument correctly in the mix. EQ is subjective 
and can be influenced greatly by the style of music that you are mixing. We're going to run through the EQ features that Cubase has to offer, but feel free to experiment and try the different presets on your mix. Solo the drums track and click the Edit Instrument Channel Settings button. This will call up our EQ. Make sure you have a section of music looping so that you can hear the EQ changes you are making. There are four bands of EQ on each track. Click on the EQ Band Active button for each of the EQs to turn them on. You can also click in the EQ Curve area to turn on an EQ. Click and move the EQ point up, down, right or left. Moving the EQ point up or down raises or lowers the gain of the EQ. The gain makes that particular EQ louder or softer. The EQ band gain at the bottom of the EQ window gives you the value of the gain. If you hold down control on the PC or command on the Mac, you can restrict the movement of the EQ to just up or down. Moving the EQ point left or right changes the frequency of the EQ. The EQ band frequency at the bottom of the EQ window gives you the value of this frequency. If you hold down Alt on the PC or Option on the Mac, you can restrict the movement of the EQ to just left or right. Holding down Shift while moving the EQ point up or down changes the quality of the EQ. Many people refer to this as the width of the EQ. The EQ band Q at the bottom of the EQ window gives you the value of the quality. The Preset Management button allows you to recall and store presets. Choose from the list to get a sound that's close to what you want, and then adjust it slightly. You can then store it as a new preset. You can bypass the EQs by clicking on the Bypass Equalizers button. A good tip when using EQ is that it's usually better to take away EQ or lower the gain than to add it. Now let's move on to effects. We can add effects by inserting the effect directly on a track, or we can create an FX channel and use the auxiliary Click on the sense select of a track insert to send type to that one FX slot channel and choose VST Dynamics. Let's add compression to the bass track to smooth it out. Click on the select insert type one slot and choose compressor from the dynamic submenu. Make changes to the compression. show you how to create and use effects channels. Close the mixer and choose effects channel from the add track submenu of the project menu. Choose stereo for configuration and select the stereo delay effect. We are going to put delay on the electric guitar track. Let's set the delay so that the left side and right side have different delay settings and make sure the mix is set to 100. Giving the stereo delay different left and right settings creates a more dynamic effect. With the delay set, click on the Edit Channel settings of the electric guitar track. Select FX1 Stereo Delay from the Select Send destination. Press the Active Send 1 button to turn on the send. This will allow you to send the guitar to the stereo delay. Pressing the S or solo button on the track will allow you to hear this more clearly. Move the slider to the right to raise the level of the send to the stereo delay effect. You will begin to hear the guitar being delayed. The great thing about effects channels is that the channel looks and feels just like a regular audio channel. You can EQ the effects channel, allowing you to EQ just the effect. In our case, changing the EQ on the FX1 stereo delay effects channel will only change the EQ of the delay. Now let's move on to automation. Automation allows us to make objects such as faders, pan, knobs and effects move by themselves. This is very handy in that we can tell Cubase to make changes over a period of time and those changes will be remembered and will occur again without our attention. We created a fade in on the electric guitar track earlier. Let's remove the fade on this audio event and create some automation instead. 
select the event and choose Remove Fades from the audio menu. Click the Show Hide Automation button at the far left of the track. You may need to hover your mouse over the far left bottom area until you see the button appear. In the window that appears below the audio event, use the Draw tool to draw in automation so that it resembles a fade-in. You can also use the Line tool to draw an automation in a straight line. Perfect for fade-in automation. Listen to the fade-in that we just created. You may have noticed that when we used the Draw tool to place an automation, the R button or Read Enable button became highlighted. This means that the automation on the track is being read back or played back. You can turn this off and the automation will not be read back or not played. In our case, we drew in volume automation, so turning it off means it will not fade in but stay at one level. There are so many examples to show when it comes to automation. We could have automated our effects or our send levels. The automation can be placed into write mode and moving almost anything will create automation that we can edit for fine tuning later on. Now that we have our project mixed, we will want to export it so that we can import it into another program such as a CD burning application like WaveLab. Before we can export our mix, we need to tell Cubase how many bars to export. We can accomplish this by setting the locators. Set the left locator to bar one, and the right locator to bar 65 on the transport panel. This will make sure we have all the music for export. Next select Audio Mix Down from the Export sub-menu of the File menu. The Export Audio Mix Down window opens. There are many features in this window that are covered in the Export Audio Mix Down chapter of the Operation Manual. Please refer to this for more complete information. File name is for naming the file for export. Let's name ours Mixing Mixdown. The path is where you wish to save the exported file on your computer. Use the Choose button to navigate to the folder you wish to save to. For convenience, there is the option to choose Use Project Audio Folder so that the exported file will end up in your project's audio folder. This is one of the best places to keep it so it won't accidentally become erased or lost. Normally, you want to save your exported file as a WAV file under File Format. This, of course, chiefly depends on what file format the other applications, such as a CD burning program, requires. You can choose whether you want the main stereo outputs, stereo out stereo, to be exported. This means the exported file will be generated through the main stereo outputs that we see in the mixer. You can also choose the individual outs of the audio channel for flexibility in your export. Let's choose stereo out stereo. Choose the sample rate and bit depth that will be required for your export. 44 1 kHz and 16 bit are common for CD burning. Select the bottom three left options, as these will import the audio back into Cubase after you export it and automatically create an audio track. The Export Audio Mixdown window will also close. Before we finish, there is one very important feature that we must select. This is Real-Time Export. Since we have an external MIDI instrument that is playing a physical keyboard and its audio is coming back into Cubase, we need the audio mixdown to happen in real time. This ensures that the MIDI data is properly sent to the external MIDI instrument and recorded back in. Don't forget this step. When you are done selecting all the right settings, choose Export at the bottom right. You will now see the exported stereo mix on a new stereo track. You can check to see if the audio mixdown sounds the way you want it by soloing the mixdown track. 